Hi, my name's Laurie O'Donoghue from Total Management Training and I'm joining today for one of our whiteboard sessions and this is the first of a series of sessions on how to manage hazardous chemicals in the workplace. The first thing we talk about is why do we do this? Why do we need to manage hazardous chemicals in the workplace? Well, we want to make sure that no workers are injured or exposed to illnesses when using chemicals in the workplace. Now, there is a fair bit of legislation in Australia about ha managing hazardous chemicals. You'll need to refer to that legislation for full detail. These are just overview videos to give you some direction in how to go about it. This first session is an overview of managing hazardous chemicals in the workplace. The first thing we need to do is we need to identify when we bring a hazardous chemical into the workplace, whether or not it is a hazardous chemical. Now, we do that by obtaining information from the manufacturer, importer, supplier, wherever you got the chemicals from. And you do that through the label on the actual chemical itself or through the safety data sheet. If you can't determine it from either of those, then you should be contacting the manufacturer to determine whether it is a hazardous chemical or has been defined as a hazardous chemical. If you determine that it is not a hazardous chemical, you really need to take no action whatsoever except to follow what is on the can or on the bottle or on the label. There's no need to record risk assessments or do anything of that nature. However, if it is found to be a hazardous chemical, then you need to conduct a risk assessment. Now, the depth of the risk assessment will be relative to the risks that are associated with that risk assessment. Things that you need to consider is, how are you going to store the hazardous chemical? Could there be risks associated with that storage? Could it be incompatible with other substances? Could a spill cause a problem? So you need to look at the processes for storage. You need to look at how you are going to use the hazardous chemical. And in using the hazardous chemical, the things we need to consider is how we're going to control it in the workplace. Do we need to prepare standard work procedures, for example? Do we need to train our workers in the use of those hazardous chemicals? Or do we need to put a more detailed control in or a more control which actually controls the workplace, such as putting ventilation systems in place? We need to look at the emergency procedures that may occur. So we need to look at whether a fire can occur. And if there is a potential for a fire, what do we need to do to control that fire? If there's a spill, we need to look at whether or not we're going to be exposing workers from the exposure to the spill, or we're going to be exposing the environment to the spill. And finally, we need to consider what first aid is required. Does the hazardous chemical require specific sponsors to first aid? Do we need to carry certain gels or do we need to have a eye wash process in place? So we need to consider all that as part of first aid. We then need to look at transport. How are we going to transport the materials? If we're transporting, for example, gas cylinders on the back of vehicles, do we need to look at how that is going to be transported? And finally, we need to look at disposal. How do we get rid of a substance if we no longer want, need to use the rest of it? Can it be disposed in the normal waterways through the sewage system, or do we need to bring in a disposal company to dispose of that substance? All of those things will be considered in the risk assessment, and all of those topics will be looked at in more detail in future and further sessions on the whiteboard. And finally, one of the things that will be looked at in each of those sessions is the recording and record keeping. What sort of records do we need to keep? Do we need to keep registers? Do we need to have safety data sheets? Do we need to keep the risk assessments? What do we need to keep for emergency plans? What do we need to keep for emergency services such as manifests? So each of those will be discussed in future whiteboard session. If you like this video, then hit the like button below. Why not share this with your friends and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let me know what your thoughts are regarding these tips and if you are going to implement them. Thank you so much and I will see you on our next video.